Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. Change when it, when it all came down, when he told me that he was gonna file bankruptcy. I remember the good time, all the good time. I was there when he was getting ready to build a house, the $17 million crib with the, the, the 5, 15, 16 car garage and all that on the hill in Fremont, it was nothing but land. He's like, I'm putting a, what's over here? I'm putting a pool over here. I'm doing this video, I'm doing this. And at that time he was building. And me and was riding one time. Cause Hammer was really uh, seclusive. He didn't like to go places because when he got so famous, he couldn't go nowhere no more. Mm -hmm. He said, man, I miss being normal. I can't go to the grocery store, I can't go nowhere. You know what I'm I get mobbed. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. <laughs> I, gotta you, I gotta ask you about, uh, before, I, before it slipped my mind. Okay. Uh, your mother, you mm -hmm. said, you, I remember you said on the set that she was, was uh, upset, uh, uh, she had lost her, her job. But yeah. I also wanted to talk about just the financial, uh, he got into a financial bind at the end. Everybody know that. Mm -hmm. He lost everything according to the way it looked. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But you know, rich people, you know, when you say a, a person who rich broke, it's not the same as a broke, broke nigga. Yeah. But he wasn't the same MC Hammer. Did you see the decline? Did you see when it started to to dip? Were you there or did you jump ship early? No, 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 no. Um, I mean, when, I, when it changed, when it, when it all came down, when he told me that he was gonna file bankruptcy. I remember the good time, all the good time. I was there when he was getting ready to build a house, the $17 million crib with the, the, the five, 15, 16 car garage and all that on the hill in Fremont, it was nothing but land. He's like, I'm putting a, what's over here? I'm putting a pool over here. I'm doing this video, I'm doing this. And at that time he was building. And me and was riding one time. Cause Hammer was really uh, seclusive. He didn't like to go places cause when he got so famous, he couldn't go nowhere no more. Mm -hmm. you know, he said, man, I miss being normal. I can't go to the grocery store, I can't go nowhere. You know what I'm saying? I get mobbed. He said, uh, what you doing, Benito? I said, I'm nothing chilling, Todd. Come hang out with me. I don't care if I had some playing with a friend or something, a girl, what? I had to, hey, hey, I gotta go. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I went to the house and he said, let's go, let's go riding. We just went riding, man, up in Pleasanton, California. And we stopped at the KFC. Cause how many used to love chicken? You love them, them chicken hot wings? That was his favorite food. Them hot wings from KFC. KFC. And we stopped there and ate, man. And we sitting there talking. I asked him the question. I said, Hammer. How does it feel to be a me, multi-millionaire, man? He said, Benito ain't never really thought about it. He said, because I, I, I work so much, I don't you know, have a time to really spend my enjoy. money, enjoy my money. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm just still stacking because I, I want to make it where, you know, at the time he had his first baby, her name was Akiba. Uh, you know, said, so take care of my wife and my kids and, and, and build and have something, you know, for my family, my mother, my father, and all that, and my brothers and sisters, man, you know, keep everybody working because he applauded everybody. The whole family worked for him as well as others, friends, cousins, you name it. We had, you said a while ago how many people we had. On the road we had about 150. Yeah. But Hammer at one time employed over 400 people. Wow. Man, Hammer was a good dude, mm -hmm. man. Let me tell to, you this. To, to try to keep try me on point, help everybody. I don't miss my point. No, because I get then it. when you say that, because that, the whole time when you're talking about that before, in my mind I'm like, was that what made him get broke? Helping everybody? Yes. But see, when, he, when people say broke, he wasn't broke by our means. Right. He was broke by rich post, rich people means. When Hammer filed bankruptcy, he still had $30 million. And that was in 1990, what? Four? Three, four? So, what's $30 million? That's a lot of money, ain't it? But the most, but he had filed the chapter, I don't know if it was seven or, or 11, one of them, two. Whatever it was, he was, everything was frozen for seven years. Wow. So, I knew he did all that. And he gave up the label that I was signed to. I was signed to Buster Records. B. Angie B. Remember her? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three five seven. Three five seven. Whole Fred Ho. David Black. Wow. One cause, one effect. Dope. Um, uh, Special Generation. Soft Touch. Um, um, it was two other groups. I can't remember their names. But anyway, he had about ten groups. He let us all go. He released us to his brother Lewis. Okay. So we stayed down with Lewis for another year. Okay. So I didn't leave Fremont. I stayed in Fremont for a whole another year after him released us. Hammer just had to take a break because he's like, I got to get my head together. You know, when we were signed with Capital, Buster Records, Capital gave Hammer an open checkbook to do whatever. At the end, Hammer said over $9 million was unaccounted for. Mm. $9 million. That's when he was buying them horses and the race cars and all this kind of stuff. You know, free spending 
what necessary, unnecessary. And not tracking everything. Yeah, and when tracking it, and it all fell back on him. So at the end of the day, he's like, damn, how did I spend all that money? I don't remember spending all the millions. But his brother was doing it. Lewis was doing it and handling all the business. Lewis was the manager of the year one year. And wow. Forbes, Forbes 500. Hammer's brother for being a manager. But, um, yeah, wow. man, there's it a lot of loopholes. A lot of things happened that was crazy. Do you regret any, like, like you, you, you definitely signed that first deal. The big deal that you talked about oh, coming, did it come? And, and when it come to your publishing and all of the stuff that lines out when a person is a writer, when a person is an entertainer? Well, Check this out. You, you, well, like what was the what was the deal? But before I get it, because when I Google MC Hammer net worth today, mm -hmm. it said he's only worth two million dollars. Mm -hmm. So it went from you said after he filed bankruptcy, that's thirty million dollars. Mm -hmm. How he went all the way down to two? I guess they don't value him like that no more. Exactly. He still got money. About three four years ago, Hammer sold half his puzzle for fifty million dollars. Yeah, so he did the same thing Nelly just did. They're not gonna show. They're not gonna tell that. Okay, I'm telling it. Uh -oh. <laughs> but I want to talk about your publishing. Back, back and, this. Yeah, and and your whole situation really. <clears throat> I was 19 years old. I signed with Hammer. And when I got back to Oakland, they called me to the office, and I sit down in front of Hammer's brother Lewis. Hammer was there, and the manager Craig Brooks. This is what you don't know about business. I signed a Catch 22 deal. Didn't even know it. I, my deal was 350 thousand dollars. Hammer said, your bonus is going to be $100,000 cash. Do whatever you want. But I advise you, Benito, take that money and just pinch off of it. Because, you know, you ain't going to get no more money until after your album come out and we recoup all our, 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 everything back. See, a lot, a lot of artists don't be knowing that when they get signed to major labels. Everything is recoupable. I don't care if you buy some gum or many the time you went to the store and you bought that new shirt, you needed them shoes, all that. They're going to add all that shit in there. you be like, damn, man. And, and they always reserve a third of everything you make. So when you have your second album coming, you sell a million copies of your first album. When they give you the money for your second album in advance, that's the money you made at the first one. They make it seem like they give you, you know, saying your money. Mm -hmm. Uh-uh. That's that's the money they had probably had reserve and give you that. You always stand the hole. How much money did you have in total? The most you ever had <clears throat> in one time dealing with MCM? About one hundred fifty thousand. That's the most you ever had in the yeah family. yeah in line because the other part of the money, the other two hundred fifty thousand went towards producers. Uh, songwriters and all that kind of stuff. See, I didn't know. I had to learn the game. I didn't know about writing because I was a writer. And that's when the situation came up with the Aaron Hall situation later down the line. Aaron Hall, yeah, uh, you tell, yeah, and, and we're gonna talk about that. But yeah. I wanna, I wanna just focus on the fact of when you had your deal. Mm -hmm. At the end, did you still owe him money, or were you, were you, were you in the green? No. I, see, I, I made, I made money two or three different ways. I was signed to a record deal. Then him pay me for being on stage with him. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk.